Hey y'all, it's Ahava. It's time to make dinner, except my fridge looks like this. Which is to say, I'm gonna have to be a little creative tonight. Let's see what we got in the freezer. Okay, let's see, we've got flour substitutes, oats, fake sugar, rice, yeast, corn flour, frozen veggies for stock, ice cream, quinoa, Frozen fruit, soy protein that I can't eat, frozen veggies we can work with, and a bunch of frozen meat. Here is what I scrounged out of my cabinet. We got olives, we've got, ooh, mushrooms to make broth with, rice noodles, more olives, buckwheat, black-eyed peas, canned chickpeas, corns, tomato, some onions, and four potatoes. We also have a bunch of beans, but I didn't soak them, so that's not gonna work today. I also found some lentils, and we do have pasta, but we already had pasta this week. So I think I'm gonna do something with the lentils. I gotta think about this. I'll get back to you. So I found a recipe online for like lentil bolognese, which sounds really good, and it says you can do it over pasta or polenta. And polenta is basically grits, and grits I'm really good at. So we're gonna do that. We're going to start with slicing onions and garlic for our peas and also for our bolognese. Here we have chicken soup mix to go in the polenta and hot water, which is going to come to a boil. Olive oil in the bottom of the pan. We're going to add our onions to start our bolognese. Part of cooking is stirring. Here is where I realized that I just turned a perfectly good par of spatula dairy. And here we're back with a dairy spatula. And here we are with our garlic and the spinach now that our onions are cooked. Spinach is a great way to add a little bit of extra nutrition to a dish without really impacting the flavor. Now we're coming to our spices which is oregano, rosemary, and basil along with a little bit of garlic as our base of flavor for our bolognese. Now time for the cornmeal which is not the same thing as corn flour that is the base of the polenta. It might also be sold as grits where you live. Back to the bolognese, we're gonna add our spices, a little bit more oil because it got dry, and then we're gonna come in with some tomato paste to start the tomato-y flavor of the sauce. Once you get this mixed in, you really wanna get it a little bit brown at the bottom, so you're gonna let it cook a little bit, and then you're gonna deglaze the pan. I ended up using white vinegar because I have a grape allergy, so I can't use wine. The recipe suggested red wine is a really nice way to deglaze this pan. With the pan deglazed, we're now gonna add our tomatoes. It can be cubed tomatoes, it can be diced tomatoes, whatever it is you want tomatoes from a can uh, to mix in and really create the broth, if you will, for the sauce. With the sauce created, we're going to add our plant-based protein in the form of lentils. These are green lentils and some ground walnuts that I found from Pesach. Um, you can also use hemp and you can use other kinds of lentils here. The main idea is that it's some kind of lentil you're going to cook in this tomato sauce. Throw a lid on this and it'll cook for about 20 minutes and we're going to start our peas! Okay, so this is oil. Onions, let them cook the same way that you do with any other time you're cooking onions. Mix them up. We're checking again on our polenta. It's getting nice and thick, but we want to add a little more water because it really should be a four to one ratio and it was not when I started. Stir that water in, let it sit and boil and cook a little more. Be careful, polenta will boil and it will pop and it will hurt if you are not careful when you are stirring this pot. Now we're back to our peas. We're gonna add our garlic because onions and garlic are the base of all flavor. With the aromatics cooked, we're ready to add our peas. Just mix them in and let them heat up. Frozen peas are the best kind of peas. Peas that come out of a can are not worthy of the title. Back to the polenta, we're gonna throw a lid on it. You let it cook for about half an hour. Add salt and pepper to the peas, and they're good and done. Hey guys, I'm just waiting for everything to cook. It takes about half an hour, both for polenta and for the bolognese, to get all the lentils nice and cooked. So it's just a waiting game. So when the polenta is done, it's thick, it's tender, the grains aren't gritty anymore. 
you add a nice heap of dairy or non-dairy butter. This was non-dairy butter because it's a part of pan. Just to make it nice and creamy, you want to get it all mixed in and melty. The bolognese is done when the lentils are soft but not too soft. That's when you're going to add your salt and your pepper to taste and get them nice and mixed in. And then you're ready to serve. And here's your final product. It was delicious. Hey guys, it's Ahava. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you made it. I'm going to link also in the description the recipe that I pulled from. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know what you think.